Here's a quick breakdown of how I made this fun unicorn character here with a huge amount of tips and tricks along the way. If you want a more detailed guide, then do check out my low cost courses, link in the description. So the first part is getting the reference image in. I only drew a front view, I drew the final pose I wanted, but I also drew a resting pose so I could have it set up to rig properly. I then blobbed out the shape as I call it using icospheres, and I just build up the object, kind of tracing around the outline. For the legs, I only do one side because I'll mirror those to the other side. I don't use too many, I don't go too detailed, I'm just trying to get the outline shape. Once I've got a rough outline, then I'll start joining shapes together. So for the head, the legs and the body. You just select them all and press Ctrl J. For the legs, I mirror them to the other side. So I just create a mirror modifier. And now I'm ready to start the first level of detail. The first thing I do is a remesh so that the join doesn't have any overlapping shapes and it makes it completely manifold so I can sculpt it nice and easily. And I basically repeat that process for all the other shapes on the horse. You can see that the voxel size or the size of my individual faces are still quite fine. It's not particularly high resolution, should we say. I try and keep it as low as possible for as long as possible. It's much easier to sculpt when you've got a lower amount of topology, unless you're trying to do fine details, of course. I join the legs to the body and I'm now working on what is the final stage of detail because it's not particularly high poly or high detailed. It's just about giving it a little bit of muscular structure and perhaps a little bit of details like the hooves and so forth. The main brush that I'm using throughout is the grab brush, but I do jump to the crease brush and occasionally the draw brush. So those are the three main brushes. But again, the most important is the grab brush because I'm really just trying to shape the character rather than add too much detail. The brush that I use for the detail is the crease brush. It's like I'm drawing in the muscular structure. Now, in terms of how long it took me to create this model, I've got four hours worth of recording that I've squashed down and cut bits out of. The process is actually a lot longer than that because there's lots of thinking about things, going and finding reference images and so forth. I would say the actual time is kind of double or triple that even. I tend to spend a bit more time and detail on the face of any character that I create. That's often the most important, the first noticed by the audience, and it's what really gives it its character. You do need to think about decisions, whether you're going to have the mouth open or closed. Having the mouth open gives you lots of options for expressions, but having it closed is far quicker. Of course, as I finish an object, I join it to the rest of the body and do another remesh. For the horse's mane, I drew some planes down the back of its neck and then just extruded them out and then started sculpting those in a similar way. The mane and the tail ended up being quite time consuming, mainly because it was just hard to make it look good. Now for the horn, I wanted it to be oversized and ridiculous. So I just placed a kind of cone marker in here to get the size and shape that I wanted. Then I used the curve spiral add-on, which comes with Blender, you just have to enable it, to create the curvy spiral for the shape of the horn. I then added some thickness to that curve and then converted it to a mesh and started sculpting it a bit more. So again, I did a remesh, smoothed it out, moved it about a little bit, changed the shape to make sure I was happy with it and then placed it at the front of the unicorn. I then worked on the mane and the tail a bit more, trying to give it a bit more creativity and flair. It was slowly getting there, but it's still taking a long time and there's still a long way to go. So because I had the mouth open, I needed some teeth. So I just had a cube and kind of extruded it around like this, added a little bit of detail and then just chucked it in. Once in the mouth, I sort of adapted the shape slightly to make sure it fit and duplicated it for the top set of teeth. Here you can see my low poly mesh. That's using quad remesher to remesh. With a lower poly mesh, I can unwrap it and paint it. The quad remesher is the one paid for add-on that I use. You can use a program called Instant Mesh. I think it's still going anyway. It does a fairly similar thing. The painting process was fairly straightforward. As long as you've got a good unwrap, you don't have to worry too much. You just start painting over your object. I went for sort of pinky purpley colors. I wanted it to contrast the sort of aggressiveness of the character. I was thinking fairly sort of bright, colorful, cartoony style, and it seemed kind of fun. I am actually studying reference images at the same time as doing this, so I'm kind of carefully considering where to add color and where not to. Once the painting's finished, I need to start rigging. This is actually a Rigify rig. So there's a horse template you can use, and I used that, lined it up, and tested it out, and it seemed to work pretty well. There are a few tiny errors. I had to carefully weight paint the teeth to that one bone at the front there. But that seemed to be the only thing that I had any slight difficulty with. The rest seemed to skin quite well. Then it's just a case of putting it into its pose position. 
There are a couple of weight paint issues around the neck, which you can probably see there. They're not too bad, they don't destroy it, and I can change them with some of the tweak bones. The tweak bones are those blue dots you can see around the place, and you can just tweak the mesh slightly with those. In order to make the hair look better, I decided to add some curves to act like big clumps and waves of hair. Once I was happy with the shape of one, then I could duplicate it and add it to lots of different areas of the hair. Obviously I had to add that to the rig as well once I'd finished, but I think they helped to break up that kind of big shape of the hair. It did take a little while to place them all along the mane and the tail, and I did refine the shape of the tail and the mane to make it a little bit sharper and kind of work with those curves. I decided to go for a bright red colour for the mane and the tail. The final result I went for even more of a vivid red than this. I thought it was quite a nice contrast to the pink of the hooves and the nose. I was getting fairly happy with the shape now but there was a little bit more I needed to do. I used some shape keys just to refine the shape, smooth areas out to make sure it was working without any pinching of the mesh. Once I was happy with the pose, then I just added some lights and we've got the final result there. So there we have it. I really enjoyed this one. I thought the character was really good fun and it turned out a lot better than I was expecting. Once I sorted out all the hair issues I was having. Thanks for watching and if you've got any questions, then do comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.